Good evening. Let's get, get at your songbooks. Let's turn to page 95. Page 95, Kneel at the Cross. <clears throat> Page 90, page 90, living by faith.
you would never feel the fire or shiver in the cold. But I did say you'd never walk through this world alone. And I did say, don't make this world your home. you in the night, or that loneliness was something you never have to fight, but I did say, I'd be right there by your side, and I did say, I'll always help you fight, you know I made a promise. song I uh, I felt led all day like I'm supposed to share my testimony of what the, the Lord just brought me through. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so thankful for those promises I just sang about. And so a few months ago I started uh, experiencing some pain in my throat and in my vocal cords and wasn't really sure what was going on and I couldn't, it got to a point where I couldn't sing but hardly one song without being in excruciating pain when I'd sing. 
and uh, just briefly, I, I went to my local ENT, and they basically just said, uh, this is kind of beyond us. We're going to refer you to Ohio State. And they put me on vocal rest for three weeks, and I couldn't speak, and I couldn't sing. And I was so discouraged. <laughs> but then it hit me. <laughs> that if I can't sing another note, if I can't speak another day on this earth, that God has been far too good to me to not give him the praise and the glory for all that he's done for me. And you know, if the devil wants to try and take my voice, he can take it because he can't take one thing and that's the joy of salvation I feel in my heart. He's just been so good to me and better yet, I went to a high state last week <laughs> and I got there and they said, Sis, we can't explain it, but there's nothing there. God's been 
the cost and trust you as your child. I saw your crown of thorns, how you gladly wore it. Every cross I bear, I'm stronger for it. Aren't you thankful that we got to see a miracle sing tonight? Go ahead and get that promise song. We'll do that one for uh, invitation, okay? Sorry, I should have told you that before you unhooked everything. Turn to Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. We say it's often sometimes the most familiar passages are sometimes the hardest to preach because you've heard so many stories. We've heard this story throughout the history of the church and yet I think it's exactly what we've, we need for this evening. Joshua chapter 6, we'll begin reading in verse 12. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually 
and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they can pass the city once and return to the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up, rose early about the dawning of the day and can pass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they can pass the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. We'll stop there. We, we say so often that it doesn't take long after you become victorious in your Christian walk. It don't take long for a Jericho to show up. We say that often. We always say, you know, this life of Christianity is not meant to be, um, you know, full of uh, mountaintop experiences every day of your life. However, if it was not for the valley, we wouldn't even know a mountain even existed. So God uses these Jericho experiences to teach us some valuable lessons. The children of Israel had just gotten into the promised land and been walking around 40 years. And God, they finally got into the promised land. Now they're at the first city that they had to take. God had already promised them that this land is theirs. Now they're going to have to take over this city called Jericho. There's a problem, though. And you all know this. I'm not telling you nothing you don't already know. But for those of you that may be new to church or new to just the Bible stories, let me just share with you briefly what's going on. Jericho is a major city. Uh, it's, there's, it's a trade route that runs from Egypt through Jericho. Not only that, but it is a fortified city. The, the walls surrounding this city of Jericho stand 30 feet high, estimates six foot thick. So we know that it's an impenetrable city uh, as what they would think. And so they thought they were very protected behind those walls. And so it comes to the children of Israel, they have to take over this city. And in order to do so, now the leader of the children of Israel, the previous leader Moses had died, Joshua has taken over. And now they come to this city and, and God in verses one through five of chapter six, give him specific instructions on what they are to do. He proceeds to go on and tell the priests in verse six. He then uh, tells the people uh, in verse seven and, and then tells the priests in verse eight and and down through six through eight, he gives them the instructions of what they are to do. And we know that the plan that God gave them worked, right? We know the story. Here's the plan. It's really not difficult. I want everyone to walk around Jericho, not say a word. I want you to walk around once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. Now, we say that so often, and sometimes it becomes, it just bounces in one ear and out the other. We, we really don't pay attention to the task that was involved here. So let me, let me tell you this. The story of the walls of Jericho and, and the children of Israel taking over Jericho comes down to this one sentence. God will handle your progress as long as you handle God's process. God will handle your progress as long as you handle God's process. It's not always God's will for him to answer your prayers immediately. We know he can. <laughs> we know he can. If you're saved, you know he can. Right? You can, he can answer immediately. And I'm so thankful for the times that he does when we pray, he answers, and sometimes the will of God calls for that. But most of the time, God issues a delay, so to speak. 
He requires some patience on our behalf. And if we understand that this story will teach us some wonderful things about God's progress as long as we can handle the process that he lays out for us. I want you to notice three things about this story and concerning the children of Israel, and hopefully we'll learn something tonight. First of all, I want you to notice the discipline. The discipline. How many of you believe this, that God's ways are not our ways, right? Sometimes God's ways are uncommon. They are unnatural. They are unorthodox. And sometimes they're unexplainable. They're unorthodox, they're unexplainable, they're unnatural, they're uncommon, but that's not our problem. Our problem is simply doing what he tells us to do. Our pastor preached years ago about the fact that what God tells us to do, it's our responsibility to do it, the results are up to him. And I, I've taken that to heart so many times. I have learned that sometimes all I got to do is walk around a wall for seven days. And as long as I do what he tells me to do and in discipline in what he tells me to do, God will take care of the results. He'll do it. So here's the discipline. They had to walk in synchronization. That means they had to walk alongside one another. They had to walk in sequence. That means they had to walk in front of and behind one another. And here's the key, they had to walk in silence. So here, that's the discipline. Synchronization, sequence, and silence. And God said, as long as you do that, Joshua, as long as the children of Israel obey what I'm saying and what you tell them to do through me, the wall is gonna come down. Now this teaches us this principle of discipline. Sometimes the supernatural often requires Simple obedience. When are we going to learn that all we got to do is do the simple stuff the right way and God will do supernatural things? I know God's ways are uncommon. I know they're unorthodox. I know they're unexplainable. Sometimes they're unnatural. But most of the time what he requires us to do is simple. And I believe, I firmly believe That if sometimes if he asks us to do more difficult things, that for some odd reason, some people will be lining up to do it because they feel like it's a challenge. But God said, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving the things of of, of what I'm trying to teach you. I'm putting them down as uh, as our dear friend Reuben uh, Reuben Bean of the McCamies used to say, I'm putting it down on the bottom shelf so everyone can understand it. He tells us that if we want supernatural things, we don't have to do supernatural things ourselves. All we gotta do is obey and simply obey what he tells us to do. Was it hard for them to walk around a wall? That's not a hard thing to do. He says, I want you to walk around a wall one day for six days, excuse me, once a day for six days and on the seventh day walk around seven days. How hard is that to do? It's not hard. So they walked in synchronization, they walked in sequence, and they walked in silence. Notice that. For six days and for seven times on the seventh day, they had to be completely silent. Now you say, Brian, that ain't a big deal. Oh, okay. Do you understand there's 750,000 to 2 million people Walking around a fortified city, our pastors preached before that there were probably people living on tops of these walls. There was military on top of the walls. They no doubt saw these one million to two million people walking around this city. They saw them every day not saying a word. Well, that's not hard to do, Brian. I can't keep you guys from shutting up during the whole church service. Can you imagine walking around I mean, it's hard enough for you to keep quiet by yourself. I can't do it. I, can't, I talk to myself all day long. <laughs> I can't do it. But can you imagine one, one to two million people trying to stay silent? But God said you had to do it. And what, what I'm trying to say is that required discipline. And God 
honors discipline. What, what was that? What is the walking in silence? What did, it, what did it stand for? Here's what I thought. A closed mouth represented a controlled mind. A closed mouth represented a controlled mind. Do you understand that some of us, when we open our mouths, our mind goes with it? And when they were simply two million people, one, one to two million people walking around the city, not saying a word, walking in synchronization, walking in sequence, walking in silence, can you imagine the discipline that took? But you know what they were saying? We're not saying a word because God said this is what we're supposed to do and we're trusting God. A controlled mind means that you're not crazy. A controlled tongue does not mean you're crazy. It just means you're trusting God. Sometimes we'd be a lot better off if we just walk around and don't say a thing. Just simply trust God. My papa, James Ray, he was, my dad can vouch for this. He was, he was a proponent of not saying anything about the sicknesses you're going through. And what, this is what he'd say. I'm not telling the devil, I'm not saying that I'm sick because the devil's gonna hear it. He said, I'm not telling the devil I got a cold. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I don't want the devil to hear it. And listen, sometimes we'd be a lot better off if we just do what God says to do, be disciplined in what he tells us to do, and keep our mouth shut. good preaching. So we learn about discipline. Secondly, we learn about delays. Delays. Of all people, these people right here knew that God did not need a week to do something. They seen and heard how God can do things right now. You remember, this is the same people that saw a sea, a red sea, part right in front of their eyes. <laughs> After Moses lifted up his rod and, and, and prayed, and the Bible says that the red sea parted, they saw God move immediately. And they knew, they knew that, that, that God, it didn't take him a week to, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take God a week to create this world, but he chose to do it in six days. He could have said it, it could have been done in a matter of one word. In fact, he didn't have to say it. It could have just been done. This miracle right here of Jericho, he could have removed the walls so that they didn't even know there were walls that even existed. He could have done it. But why does God choose to delay? Here's why. Because if you got everything right now, your faith would not be matured. exactly right. Sometimes immediate answers will not mature our faith. Sometimes God wants us to have repetitive obedience. I don't think it's any coincidence that our lesson today in, in Sunday school class, Tim taught a tremendous lesson on Hezekiah. And we mentioned this at the end of, of the Bible lesson today about how God chooses to delay and sometimes we just have to be obedient in what he says before God will answer it. And Vince, can I share what you shared with us today in Sunday school? Vince, of course, he's a foreman on a job. And uh, it's been a little bit of a while ago. If I get it wrong, I'm just evangelizing, brother. I don't mean anything wrong with that. Anyway, I'll, hopefully I'll get it accurate. But he's a foreman on a job. And, you know, you usually don't say a lot about politics or religion on a job site, especially the kind of work he does. And so... But when God speaks to him, he tries his best to be obedient. So there was this young gentleman that worked with him. He didn't know who he was, never met him before. He just saw him in a room. God spoke to him and said, tell him I love him. And so he fought it. He fought it, but then it kept on him. It kept on him. It kept on him. And so finally one day, he walked in the room. He told the gentleman, he said, this is who I am. I just want to tell you, Jesus loves you. And he walked out of the room. God told him to do this every day for a year and a half. The gentleman had no idea about salvation. He didn't know nothing about Jesus loves him, but Vince every day kept planting the seed. And he'd go in and say, hey, I wanna tell you, Jesus loves you. 
And by the end, toward the end of that year and a half, he would walk into the room and, the, and he would start to say something. He said, hey, I want to tell you something. The gentleman would say, yeah, I know, Jesus loves me. He said one day on a Wednesday night service, he got a text from that man. He said, I just want to tell you, I just got up from the altar and I know for a fact now that Jesus loves me. Hey, sometimes it's not anything difficult. It's just telling somebody that Jesus loves them. But if you do it when he says to do it, supernatural things are going to happen. I say hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. 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 You would never mature in your faith if God answered your prayers every time you prayed them at that very moment. Now think about this. Maybe, maybe the children of Israel asked this question. No, no we've, been walking, we've been walking for 40 years. What's another week going to matter? I mean, we've been walking 40 years. Isn't 40 years long enough? Why do we got to wait another week? Oh, yeah, don't laugh too hard. We would do the same thing. Lord, I've been doing this every day. How, what's another week, Lord? Why can't you do it now? Here's why. Do you understand that these people in this story have a total different story than the ones 40 years ago? The ones that were coming out of Egypt were coming out of something. These people are going into something. And the people in this story were not even born whenever they came out of Egypt. These people were born in the wilderness. The people coming out of Egypt were their fathers and their forefathers. God was trying to tell them, I want to do something new in your life. <laughs> I want your walk to be different than the walk of your forefathers. So many times we can get caught up on what has happened in our past that we don't truly understand that God can do something right now within us. I believe we should be inspired by our forefathers and we should be inspired of what God has done for them, but we shouldn't pray that we can imitate what they've done. God has something just for us. He has something for this generation. He has something for my children and maybe one day my grandchildren. He has something new for them, but I'll tell you what, what he did for our forefathers, he can do it much better, he can do it now. We should be inspired, but thank God, because God is able to do anything. Amen. Amen. The delay, the discipline, we finally notice the devotion. In the verses that I read to you, did you notice a common number? A common number. Seven priests bearing seven trumpets. Those are ram's horns. And he told them to walk around. On the seventh day, you, you walk around seven times. So you have a seventh day. You have seven priests, seven ram's horns, seven times around. The number seven, if you know this, hopefully you know this already, the number seven is the number of completion in the Bible. So that tells us that God's plan is always complete. All he requires us to do is obey it. And then he tells them in verse 16, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord hath given you the city. He said, shout for the Lord hath given you the city. After the seventh time on the seventh day, he said, shout for the Lord hath given you the city. I didn't see it either until God showed me. He said, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. If you go back and read this story, if you go back and read this story, Joshua never told anybody that the Lord had given them the city. God only told Joshua. Joshua told the people, you just take a walk. 
That's the devotion I'm talking about. So here, get this. Joshua says, all you got to do is walk around the city six times, excuse me, once a day for six days. Seventh day, walk around seven times. That's all he told them. And guess what they did? They began to walk in silence 13 times around Jericho. And it wasn't until the seventh time around that he finally revealed to them what God had already done for him. Because see, sometimes God just wants to know, are you willing to walk around the city for me? If we knew what was coming at the end, that wouldn't be faith. If we knew what was coming, if we knew what the answer was, that wouldn't be faith. But God says, I want you to be disciplined. I want you to accept my delay, but I want you to be devoted in what I say. Listen, folks, when we go to realize, God only requires us to do one thing, and that's to be devoted and to be faithful to the word of God. He will not change what he says in his word. And it wasn't until the seventh time around on the seventh day that Joshua said, shout, I'm about ready to tell you what God has already given you. Listen, look what he said. He didn't say, he's going to give you or he will give you. He said, shout, for God hath given you the city. He already said, even before you started walking, the city was already yours. So go in and take what's rightfully yours because he's already given it to you. And when they shouted, God did the supernatural. They had no idea the wall was going to come down. They didn't. They didn't know how God was going to do it. All they knew is we're just supposed to walk. I guess I'm the only one that never heard that before. He didn't tell them the wall was going to come down. All they all he had to do, just walk. Just walk. Sometimes God will not reveal to you what the supernatural miracle is and when your answer is coming until you're willing to walk around. Until you're willing to walk and accept what he's told you. And how, how were the children, why, did, why were they willing? That, that really confused me. Why would one to two million people be willing to walk around without knowing what God was going to do? Here's the answer. Because they'd already been walking with him long enough (laughs) to know that he's going to keep his word. And whatever God's about ready to do, it's going to be something we've never seen before. Oh, listen, folks. I've I've walked with him a long time. And I know him to be faithful. I know him to be a provider. I know him to be a miracle worker. I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a heavy load carrier. I'm telling you what, folks. I'm thankful that after you walk with him for a while, whatever he tells you to do, you just do it. Be devoted to it. And he'll do the miracle. He's promised you that. Amen. Amen. They've walked with him long enough to know that God was in control. And after you walked with him long enough, you got a testimony. Say, Lord, you really want me to walk around here and not say anything? Yeah, that's all I want you to do. You mean God? You want me to Go and tell somebody at work that Jesus loves them and I don't even know who they are? Yeah. You mean, Lord, you want me to give that person some money for their ministry? But I, I don't know what it's for. I don't know. Yeah. You mean, Lord, I'm, you need me to go and call somebody and just give them a word of encouragement? Surely there's, no, no, just, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. It may sound odd. It may seem strange. You may not understand why. That's not your problem. If you've walked with him long enough, then you know. You know the feeling you get on the inside. When the Holy Spirit says, yeah, it's unnatural. It's uncommon. 
It's unheard of. But I promise you, if you just be devoted, <laughs> that wall in your life's going to come down. See, the hardest thing about it, it's easy to walk around a wall that don't exist in your life for somebody else. But when you have a wall, and then God says, I want you to go and help somebody else out, even though you got a wall in front of you, you'd be surprised that your wall's going to come down too if you just be devoted to what he said. But the greatest wall, Jody, can you come get ready and sing that song again? Thank you. The greatest wall any of you will ever face is the hardest wall to get over and get through. And that's not knowing Jesus as your Savior. I promise you there's victory in your life. And God's, God doesn't require anything supernatural on your part. It's just real simple. You just come. That's it. Just come. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to die lost without you. Friend, I, if it was any other way, it wouldn't be of God. But he made it so simple. And, but we make it so difficult. There's no steps to follow. There's no schools to go through. There's no lessons to learn. Just got to know you're lost. And that Jesus saves. And come. You'd be surprised at the walls that will come down. If you just simply obey. Let's be standing. Jody's going to sing. You mind the Lord tonight. Mind the Lord.
Lord, we thank you for your spirit and thank you for the message tonight. Thank you for these that have been at a place in their life where that they can sense the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. They've come, Lord, to just surrender things to you. We're glad that we can have the confidence that you hear us and help us in our time of need. Thank you for the singing tonight. Thank you for your mighty presence and power. And Lord, bless our church family that's facing so many different things this week. I know your grace is sufficient and you'll bring them through. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Praise you. That walls still come down. But Lord, always remind us, they shouted before the walls came down. The victory is yours, Lord. Thank you for the victory that you share with us and give to us. Bless our people in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We're so glad for all of you that have come out tonight in the service. Sure enjoyed the message, enjoyed the singing, didn't we? Amen. Amen. Just a couple of things very quickly as a reminder. Uh, they still have a sign-up sheet in the back for cookies. Is that completed yet? Let's take care of that tonight. What do you say? Stop by, sign that up, get that taken care of, and then also registration, uh, pre-registration for Vacation Bible School. Make sure you're praying for Bible School uh, every day. And then I want to remind you on this Wednesday night, we will not be live streaming uh, I've settled that in my heart and mind. If the Lord tarries is coming, we'll not be live streaming on Wednesday evening. That will give our camera operators a night of rest and video production crew a night of rest. And uh, also, we will not be recording the service. You say, what are you preaching about? Come and see. Amen. That's all I can say. Come and see. But uh, if it does for you what it's done for me uh, over the past few months of my life, I pray that God will use it to bless you. One thing that I do regret that, well, I don't regret it. I regret it for the family, but I do need to inform you of. Uh, Peach Mathis went to be with the Lord late afternoon, early evening, and uh, she's now in the presence of the Lord. We rejoice for her. We're so happy for her, but we hurt for her family. And uh, Karen and Marcia feel all of the family. They're very tired, you can only imagine, after everything they've been through. Uh, so they're trying to get some rest this evening. Uh, but they will be having a service. They'll be setting that on tomorrow. So Brian or I1 will call through on one call and notify everyone. It will be down at Wayne, West Virginia. And they're planning tentatively to have calling and, and the funeral the same day. So we'll be sure to let you know about that and be praying for the way that you can be a blessing to this family. Boy, Peach has been a blessing to us, hasn't she? Heaven sweeter than it's ever been before. And then, too, I ask that you continue to pray for the Collins family. And, Larry, we're praying for your family. Your precious, precious sister's been a blessing. And my, oh, my, Candy and I, Candy got to go in the other day with me to see her. And when we left, Candy said she looked so much like Rosie. And uh, when we told her that, Larry, she just smiled from ear to ear. She's just a precious, precious saint of God. Remember, Henry, all of their family in prayer during this time that God will help them. And Debbie's here tonight. She'll have surgery tomorrow at 2 o'clock and pray. This is the week. Uh, they still have Zeb's uh, surgery scheduled. Is that the 26th? That, that's still on on the 26th. So be praying for that this week. We're believing God for great things there. And Don is to have his testing on Tuesday. And they'll be checking everything to see if they can go through his artery to repair the valve in his heart or if he'll have to face another open heart surgery. And we're believing God to perform a miracle for Don. He's done that a lot and continue to pray that God will do that. I know a lot of other things are going on. Forgive me if I overlooked anything, but I'm getting older and I don't have any notes in front of me. But we're just glad that you're here with us tonight. I hope you'll be here on Wednesday night. Some of you have fallen out of the habit. It is, I hate to use that word, but church attendance is a habit. And do your best to be here on Wednesday night. God will bless you for it. Yes. Yes, that uh, Cindy and Kevin is with Harold down at the emergency room. Harold had a better week this week as far as he had stabilized, but then 
He's got Morris here on the weekend and today. Really pray that he doesn't have pneumonia. They're running some tests, and I know they're trying to get that all taken care of, but uh, Dot and Harold needs our prayers, and Kevin and Cindy needs our prayers and all of their family, and be praying for them. Thank you for coming out. God bless you. Consider yourself dismissed.